Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Timothy Brooks, who's W6WW. And uh, he asks this question If you have a complex impedance in the antenna, meaning the phase angles greater than zero and the power factor is less than one, uh, the key there is the phase angle is greater than zero. Although it can actually be less than zero, usually it's illustrated as negative for capacitance, positive for inductance. Does your transmitter consume more power from your battery or power supply in comparison to if there were no reactants to transmit the same amount of power? Uh, what other implications would reactants have on one station? Uh, first of all, let's just talk a little bit about what reactance is. If you have an inductor or a capacitor, they store energy. They don't dissipate energy, they store it, and then they release it. And they do that in synchrony with the frequency of the carrier wave, um, but they'll be a few degrees behind or a few degrees ahead. Okay. Actually, what happens with capacitors, which would be ahead, is that they're so far upon, uh, behind, they appear to be ahead of the leading edge of the wave following them. Now, your antenna is uh, best described as a combination of the radiation resistance, which is good resistance because that radiation resistance, that energy is converted into radio waves. Uh, if it also has ohmic resistance, which is the resistance of the wire, just plain old-fashioned resistance, and that converts energy to heat. And then you have some combination of inductance and capacitance. If your antenna is perfect, and there is no such thing, but if your antenna is perfect, you will have an inductive reactance of zero, a capacitive reactance of zero, and uh, so that it's, it's uh, resonant. When the inductive and reactive capacitances equal each other, that's resonance. Okay, and it will have a resistive impedance of 50 ohms. Now this is very rare. Even a nicely strung dipole is going to have some reactance. That's why when you put a dipole up, it's rare to be able to get it to tune in the absence of other factors like an antenna tuner, it's hard to get it to tune below 1.6 to 1. And that's fine. That's real life and that's the way things really work. Now if you use an antenna, you can, antenna tuner, you can make it look to the radio as though it's 50 ohms with no reactance. Now let me show you how we do that. Here's your transmitter and here's your coax, and here is your antenna, okay? Now the transmitter wants to look this way and see 50 ohms at zero phase angle, okay? Now, let's suppose that this is not that. It's something other than, not equal to uh, the zero phase angle. We'll just forget about the resistance part of it, but it's like 20 uh, or something like that. It's going to reflect a signal because you've got a signal coming in at 50 ohm zero phase angle coming up and hitting something that is reactive. Now remember how reactance works. It sucks in energy and then turns right around and releases it. So you're going to get a wave coming back this way and it's going to hit this, but this is 50 ohms with zero reactance. This has got a reactive term. So what happens? What happens is heat. It gets into the finals of the amplifier and creates heat. And uh, with too much heat, that can destroy the transmitter. So all modern transceivers have circuits built in so that if you get too much reflected power, it will turn down the power of the radio. Now let's suppose that 
we just transmit, this is a 100 watt transmitter. Let's suppose we just transmit with 50 watts and we have perfect reflections. Okay, then the amount of heat to be dissipated here is is a hundred. It, it can, can go in there and be right. So uh, that's why, like on the ICOM, it has a, quote, emergency mode where you can put it where it will transmit into any antenna, but it only puts out 50 watts. Now, let's look at what happens, what we want to do with this thing here, okay? What we want is something that uh, let's show you the standard, um, here's a coil connected to ground, and here is a capacitor, and here is another capacitor, and then this goes to the antenna, okay? Now, and of course this is grounded on the shield. Um, all right, now this part right here is an antenna tuner. It's got three reactive elements. Now note that all three of these reactive elements are tunable. Okay. And that way, when you get, the, the standard way to set this up, get on the frequency you want to operate. Twiddle the knobs here, and because there's three knobs, twiddle the knobs until you get to most noise received back from the antenna. That's pretty going to be pretty close. Okay, usually I do the coil first, uh, and often the coil is just a step type thing. And the more expensive ones with roller inductors, that will be continuous. But you tune that for noise and you jockey back between these until you get a one-to-one -one SWR. Here. One-to-one. Here, so this sees 50 ohms resistive. Now you've got reactive elements here, so if you have reflected uh, energy, it will come into the antenna tuner and set up properly. This will intercept that energy and store it uh, with the right phase angle and everything, so that when the next sine wave comes through here, you can add on the power that was just reflected back and send it up to here, okay? So this catches the reactive power and sends it back. Now, where you can run into trouble, notice there's nothing resistive in there. So, except for the, you know, wires between the coil and everything, there's no resistance, so a, a, trans, a transmatch, um, an antenna tuner cannot dissipate any significant amount of energy. What it does is it holds the reflected energy until the right time to send it back up here for another chance to transmit. So what does that mean? The forward power here can be greater than 100 watts because the reflected power, which is less than 100 watts, is phase delayed and added back in, and it'll go up to here. Now, will this ever des uh, uh, irradiate more than 100 watts? And the answer is no, because, you, you know, suppose you get 110 watts here, this way it's going to reflect 10, okay? Only 100 can go out. And remember, part of this right up here, there's some ohmic resistance. Now, resistance is a bit of a problem uh, and it may not be possible with your tuner to tune this down completely to a one-to-one -one ratio. If the antenna has got a, a weird or wonky um, impedance, this might be, you know, 1.1 to 1 or something like that. That's still excellent. Anything under about 1.5 to 1, you're good to go. You don't even need the tuner if that's what it is. If it's more than that, why not throw on the tuner that is in your radio? Uh, because a lot of the modern radios have a small version of this built in that can handle up to 3 to 1 SWR. Any bigger than that, you need an external tuner. My reaction would be, if you need an external tuner, you need to go work on your antenna and make your antenna better. Okay?
So there you have it. Um, let's refer to the question here again. Uh, this is from uh, Timothy Brooks, uh, W6WWW. And um, okay, so a couple uh, misapprehensions that a lot of people deal with. One, the antenna tuner does not dissipate power, nor does it create it. It can only store it and put it back out at the right phase angle. Think of it as a phase angle converter for the returned wave, okay? Now, if you change your transmission line length, obviously you're going to change the phasing between the power that's coming back and the power that's going forward. Uh, also, the modern uh, reactants only uh, tuners do not necessarily deal uh, match up the resistance part perfectly. But if you're under 1.6 to 1, you're ready to go. You'll be in good shape. So I hope that answers your question. And I will note that the higher the SWR uh, on the antenna side of the coax, the more is lost as heat in the coax because that signal keeps going back and forth and every time it goes back and forth, it, heats the, it hits the resistance of the wire in the coax. And you're dealing with skin effect here. So the fact that it's a number 14 gauge wire only means that it's this big around and the actual current is flowing in the skin of that. And you can calculate the depth. There are some formulas in the handbook. I'll have to explore those one day. Uh, but the resistance will appear higher because it's using less of the conductor. Moral of the story, work on your antennas until you have good matches. Um, if you can't, sometimes you can't. Like if you have a, a horizontal loop, I mean, your impedance is going to be really wonky and you're going to want to feed it with ladder line and an antenna tuner that will feed ladder line, which most of them do. Uh, so there you have it. Now, if you have a question and you would like to submit it, please send it to Dave, Ask Dave, that's Ask Dave, all one word, at ARRL dot uh, O-R-G, not dot net, but dot O-R-G. And that will come to me and you can attach drawings, pictures, whatever you want to that so that I can see it. Believe me, a picture is worth a thousand words. Uh, please tell me a little bit about your setup. I'd like to know what your radio is, power supply, uh, coax. I want to know where your grounding is, how your ground is set up. Uh, tell me a little bit about the antenna, where you have it set up, where there might be things in the way, and so on. Uh, pictures, again, are worth a thousand words. Now, what I did last night, for example, on uh, something that came to me, it was a question that was specific enough to a person and his living situation that I wouldn't make a video out of it, but I just wrote an answer out for him. Before I did that, I looked him up on Google Maps, and he says, okay, there's a tree here, you've got this roof here, you've got grass, you've got this yard, and I could see it all, and so I could give him a tailored answer. Okay, so... There you go. Also, I, I would encourage you to join the live streams that we have on Thursday evening. If you subscribe to the channel and click the bell, you will get a notification for these live streams. Uh, during the live streams, once a month, we give away something. This month in March of 2024, we're going to be giving away a handheld radio. And so uh, a good thing to check out. Uh, also, during that uh, live stream, I get on the air, the video is demonetized for this, I get on the air and talk to people who are in the live stream. And that's kind of fun. I can usually get about six people a live stream. So there you go. Have fun. Spring is almost upon us. Start planning those antenna upgrades. Until we next meet, 73.